Hello, this is Christopher Larson from Formosa Interactive, representing Dolby Laboratories. This is part three of the three-part series showing how to get your game audio engine to pass Dolby Atmos content from a PC to a Dolby Atmos AVR. Please check out the previous parts regarding setup and routing for both Windows 10 and AudioKinetics Wise authoring tool. You can find these videos either on the Dolby Developer YouTube channel or at developer.dolby.com. At the end of the last episode, we were able to get audio content out of WISE into the Windows Sonic plugin and to your Dolby Atmos AVR. This episode is going to cover a few examples of how one can approach developing content to take advantage of the benefits of Dolby Atmos. For the sake of convenience, the panning of all these examples is entirely done within WISE and assumes a static listener position. But these concepts can be applied to any method of implementation or game-specific mix scenarios. For instance, my positioning is done as user-defined 3D and WISE, but really you could do the same thing by placing 3D emitters in your game world. And lastly, since this screencast has sadly not been produced with spatial audio output, what you're hearing in this stream is in stereo. With Dolby Atmos allowing you to pan along the Z-axis, this not only opens up the height plane, but it also increases the depth by engaging more speakers to create a matrix for spatial reproduction. This first example is a battle ambience that I created with just a few layers of content. Starting in the distance, there is a 5.1 channel source that has distant battle ambience. I broke it up into mono stems and positioned each one into the room and just under half of maximum height to engage all of the speakers but still have it sitting at the periphery. Next is a mid-distant ambience that contains more gunfire and explosions. This is a stereo source that I again broke into mono stems in order to position the sound closer and actually below the listener as if they're overlooking the battle from a hill. Up top I have a distant jet slowly traversing from the rear right to the front left but always at the maximum height. I also have some one-shot close passovers to make people jump out of their seats a little. These come from the rear at mid-height, fully overhead, and then float down to the horizon at the distance. I also have some close sounds of artillery firing from your location. These are positioned right behind the player, with the tails traveling forward, up, and overhead. Looking at your design spatially can be done at all levels of detail, from your entire mix down to individual moments. This next example is an explosion sound that I made out of three positional layers. Starting with the body, I have two sets of split stereo files that start more central and then quickly spread out into the front of the room. One set is stacked higher in order to give a larger size as well as to give the assets some space to reduce frequency masking so their individual details can come through. There are four mono whooshes that I pan to start from the center of the explosion and spread up and out to engulf the listener. One of them is a piece of shrapnel that whizzes overhead and lands behind the listener. Then, there are four random containers for debris of various sizes hitting the ground all around the listener. These sounds are all positioned at the maximum depth, but they all have a randomized XY variation.
Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions regarding incorporating Dolby Atmos into your game title, please visit developer.dolby.com or contact us at games at dolby.com.